Here's the bottom line to all of this. It don't matter if you're 16, 17, or 18, or 19, or 20. It don't matter if you weigh 90 pounds or you weigh 200 pounds. It don't matter if you're skinny. It don't matter if you're fat or big. It don't matter if you're soft. Understand that you are a man. Understand that of all things, number one, you are a man. Even if you are a homosexual, you still are a man. And being a man, one thing about being a man is that you have to know what you're going to allow and what you're not going to allow. What you're going to stand for and what you're not going to stand for. My whole thing is this. Even for a cat that is weak, physically weak. If a man violates you, like take your manhood from you. Even if you can't beat that man physically, he's still a man. Catch him when he's going to sleep. Catch him when he's off guard, when he's at that poker table. I'm not advocating for violence. But when you are a man, see, that is what respect, that is what is respected. Because make no mistake, when convicts such as myself hear about or know about another inmate getting violated, we don't take pleasure in that. We don't think that's cute. But Penitentiary rules are in effect. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. You have to be able to physically, mentally, emotionally get through your bed. Even if you got a life sentence. And it's very rare that somebody will go outside they self and help you. Because nobody owe you nothing. You would think like, well, why, why people just don't step in and stop these booty bandits from doing what they do? I told y'all already, in prison, it's crazy. It's demented people in there. It's people that you cannot rationalize with. One of the biggest things is that if you won't defend yourself, why should I defend you? Just like if I see you getting picked on and bullied and get your stuff taken and I step in and I get I got to get into a knife fight because I butted my business into somebody else's business and you won't help and I get into pushing that blade. Y'all see the scars right here. I got the war wounds. Y'all see that? That's all knife play right there. Y'all see that right there? Let's get it close up if y'all can see that. That's, all, that's, that's war wounds right there, y'all. Dante got the scars. You don't, you can't, you don't walk the yard like I was walking and not get cut up. You don't go around putting hands on people and don't expect to get cut. You don't walk around with that sword of justice and be ready and willing to push it at any given moment at any given time. It don't get that sword of justice pushed on you. I was good with that knife. I was good with it and good at it. But I knew, just like the Bible tells us, if you live by the sword, you die by the sword. And I had that sword of justice. And I had to push it. And I had that sword of justice pushed on me too. A couple times. But I'm still here. Y'all don't see it on my face. You could never buck 50 me because I was quick with it and I was real grimy and witty with it. But I did get caught and got caught up bad right here. But that's a whole nother story. What I'm trying to tell y'all is this. When you come into penitentiary, you are a man first, even if you are a homosexual. You got to lay the law down. I'm not standing for this. I'm not going for that. And it is not about, please do not misconstrue what I'm saying here. It's not about being tough. It's about being a man. It's about standing for something. I get up every day like you do. 
I put on my drawers. I put on deodorant every day like you do. I eat and I sleep and I piss every day like you do. You are not about to come in my cell and take nothing from me. You are not about to get behind me and take your thing out and try to put it in me. I will cut that thing off. I will put something in, in your body cavities that you will never forget. Some stuff you just ain't going to go for. All the military mind games, some of these convicts that be playing them type of games. It's easy, y'all. Just listen. Most of these dudes that get preyed upon, and when I say preyed upon, I'm not talking about preyed upon. I'm talking about preyed upon. Like when the lion see a gazelle and stalk them. A lot of these cats see these new naive inmates coming in and they know that they ain't going to be able to hit the stove for a month and they know that hunger they play on cats hunger and lack of discipline if you have no discipline and can't and can't sleep on that hard cell right and your stomach reach the back of your back you starving because they only give you enough just enough to keep you alive. Just enough food. To get you through to the next day. Y'all better start having some discipline. Because that's what these dudes bank on. Because they know that you ain't got no discipline. They know they got so much experience over you. It's crazy. It's called the trick bag. The alakazam. Alakazoom. Here go a couple of here go a couple of soups. Here's a couple of Debbie cakes. A couple of drinks, sodas, pops, whatever y'all want to call it. Ain't nobody giving nobody nothing for free. Even when you join a gang. Even when you come in there gang gang. When, when them gang members come with that welcome bag for you. Understand what that is. That is just not welcome. Welcome home. We 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 here. To, we take care of our own. No, taking that bag that 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 your organization gives to you, it comes with a price. That means once you are part of this organization, blood in, blood out. But this bag that we giving you to get you right, to get you through, that comes with something. That means if I tell you and a couple of other fools to go down a couple of cells down and go put that work in, even if you got one year, you're going to go down there and you're going to get busy. You're going to go down there and you're going to push that knife or that knife going to get pushed into you. Now, some people, they join gangs for protection. Some people are already gang banging out in the streets and they naturally fall in line. But the problem come in that when you come in there doing two, three, four years. And then the gang tell you, oh, it don't stop. Nah, just because you got a year, you think you don't have to put in a work. This is why I stayed away from the gangs. Yes, I did do business with gang members, of course. But I never joined. Because number one, I can't have another man outside of my power. Telling me what I can and what I can't do. And when I say outside of my power. Because naturally the guards. Is telling me what I can and cannot do. But it's the authority. If you in here just like I'm in here. And we under the same conditions. <laughs> nah. I'm my own man. And like I said from the, from the get go. You are a man first. Whether you a straight man. Or a homosexual man. You are a man first. And I notice y'all keep hearing me harp on that homosexual word. Because some of you cats got it twisted out there. Y'all think just because a dude rock and roll that way, that he's soft. Some of these gay men that's in prison is some of the hardest men. And I'm going to tell y'all why. You got to understand what these cats been dealing with even before they even got in the penitentiary. Where they was getting rejected by their family. By their friends, mamas, daddies turning their backs on them because of their sexuality. 
You can't beat a man down this, that, that, that has been dealing with fighting. Is this right or this wrong? Being ostracized and demonized for what they are. Do, do I agree with the homosexual lifestyle? Heggs, no. Why? Because I'm a biblical man. And I'm a straight man and I just naturally like women. And one would say, well, Dante, you, do you got a problem with homosexual men? No, I don't. Why? Because that is their business. What they do in their bedroom or in their cell, that's what they do. I have nothing to do with that. If it don't apply, let it fly. But the issue is this. People really think that is all fun and games in the penitentiary, and it's not. Some some cats that you will meet in there are cool. There's some good brothers that's up in there. And when I say brothers, I'm just not talking about my black brothers. Some white dudes in there that's good brothers too. But I'm going to be real, 90% of cats in the penitentiary, they ain't worth, they ain't worth sh at all. I was going to go on and on and tell y'all about the pitfalls and what to do and what not to do to not get pimped out in the penitentiary. But no, I'm going to go ahead and do it because some knucklehead going to go out there and commit a crime anyway and end up in the hot seat of what exactly I'm talking about. Number one, don't accept nothing from nobody that you don't know. Especially if you're not a part of an organization or if you got family and friends up in there that see you and they hold you down and cool, but still watch them too. Because just because y'all with friends out here in the streets, they've been locked down for five or ten years. You don't know who that is now. The penitentiary changes a man. I'm going to tell you what it did to me. I was always the type that was, how can I put it? I was the type that would always be ready to fight. I was always ready to go. No, I wasn't a shooter out here. My vice out here in the real world was robbing and stealing. I was a thief. I was a pirate. I ain't gl I'm not glamorizing it at all. When it comes down to it, I don't want to hear all them, them hood slang talking about old Jack boy and all that. No, I was what at the bottom line. I was a thief and that's just what it was. Period. Running up on cats with the real sword of justice. Taken from people shakedowns, all of that. And that followed me in the penitentiary. I didn't know no better. It's when you go to the penitentiary, you times two or uh, uh, 10 times X what you was out there in the streets. If you was what you was out there for real. So naturally, so naturally when I went in, what, what did I do? When I didn't have no support, I was running down on cats, robbing, stealing, I can't even say stealing. I was robbing. Had a crew of cats that was like-minded, just like me. And we just put it together and concocted plans to run down on cats, doing military mind games. Catch a cat going in the cell that's new. And I run up in there on them and tell them, like, listen, I need everything that you got. And I got that sword of justice out. And then I have two of my homeboys run in on me while I'm trying to run in on him. And they bag me out the cell with they sword of justice playing the military mind games, showing this cat like we here to protect you from this guy. So now you owe us. Or I, it, it was just many things, many, many, many vices and traps where you will go to and you will set a cat up and tell him, oh, look, put all your stuff in my in my locker. Put all your commissary in my locker and you just come to me when you need something. Yo, it's so many games and military mind games. But the whole point is to tell you all this, man. It's really not that hard 
to survive in the penitentiary. It's not that hard not to get pimped out and get turned into a girl, a, a man girl in there. Or you just got to, and then, well, I hate to say it, but it's just some people, and I'm not calling these people soft at all, but it's just some people just, that just ain't got it in them to pick up something and put it in another man's flesh to defend themselves. Some people just want to be like, listen, I don't want no more problems. I don't want no issues. I just want to do my time. Let's just get, get, so, get this over with. Don't work that way. Some people is just like that. And some people, I done seen short guys, skinny guys stand up for theirs for real. And I seen big dudes fold. You never know what you made of and who you are until you get into certain predicaments and you don't even have to be in prison. When you got a cat standing in front of you with a gun telling you to give it all up. Yes, give it all up. Give it up if somebody trying to rob you. Give it up because it's not worth dying for. But what happens when you, go, when you come across a cat that's telling you to give it up and you got your hands up, but then you grab that gun from them, right? And you put the gun on them. That's different. That's a different feeling. The penitentiary is real. The penitentiary is real. And the violence is real. It's all type of larceny and type of foul acts of humanity that goes in there. We're going to talk about the guards next. But before we even get to that, I want y'all to check out this video right quick. For you cats that might for a victim of being a homosexual a homosexual in prison, this could be one of your realities. It's not worth it. Not worth it. People say they care about you, they don't. If you can find one friend that you can trust that doesn't want to have sex with you, you're lucky. Yeah. Because everybody has an agenda. Everybody got an agenda. Everybody's got something they want from you. Exactly. You just have to figure out what it is. And what you want to give it in life. Remember guys, I charge $100 to promote your social media channels. And if you have a business, I can help promote that as well. Email me at the Dante Show 88 at yahoo.com. My email is pinned at the top of the comment section.